it's my honor to be here on stage to talk about a topic which is uh, personally uh, uh, something that i truly truly love uh, and it's wonderful to be in conversation with such a powerhouse panel and i will start with a quote i found online uh, by dr uh, by professor sachidanandan the story of indian literature until the 19th century was mostly a story of creative translations adaptations retellings interpretations epitomies and elaborations of classical texts these knit together communities languages religions and cultures translation to us is a way of retrieving our people's histories and recording their past and present dr sachidar professor sachidanandan uh, has uh, quoted this and this is a such a brilliant way to talk about translations which i think is a very very important aspect of uh, literature and writing in india because we are a country of such diverse languages and cultural and literary traditions so uh, i will start off by asking dr sachidanandan to sort of elaborate on this uh yeah what you quoted uh, i think is probably right uh because uh, if you go back to uh the past of indian literature you will find that the very concept of indian literature begins with a series of translations that happened either simultaneously or at different times in different languages especially of the famous epics ramayana and mahabharata even though we do have other epics let me let me Uh, be very clear about it we have we have malay madeshwara uh, and and you have pabuji i mean you have you have epics in other languages also even though they are often uh, invisibilized uh, but then yes these were the two major tran- uh, major epics that got translated into so many languages but they were not translations in the sen- in the western sense of the term i mean uh, when you look when you compare for example the ramayanas of uh, pampa or kamba or or elutachan or molla or ramananda or premananda or tulsidas i mean and all those people eganatha all those people who have written ramayanas you will find that they were not not translating from any original text it is it is true that there is an element of valmiki in many of them even in uh, elutachan's ramayana which was not based on valmiki ramayana but on atyatma ramayana which is a part of ramanda purana but even then uh, he was also deeply impacted by valmiki ramayana and he has uh, um, uh, taken certain similes and images from ramayana uh, but then each of these poets set ramayana in their locale and they retold the story in their own very different ways you find the, uh, i i have no time to elaborate uh, on that because you know uh, first of all if you look at the landscape in the re- different ramayanas you will think that uh, everything in ramayana happened in that particular place you look at telugu ramayana or kannada ramayana uh, and and you have so, so many places also associated with ramayana across the country wherever you go so i have seen sita's kitchen in at least five places in india uh sita ki rasoi if you go to kanpur and uh, on the bank of the ganga they will say this was where sita had her kitchen when she lived in the forest so uh so uh, and and something like that happened to all these ramayanas all the all of them were uh, i mean set in the particular uh, regional uh, kind of background uh, the landscape in them the fauna the flora all of them in se- in a sense uh, belong to the regions where those the, those languages are are spoken and also you will find a lot of difference in the in the in the proportions of the various episodes some episodes are given greater importance some characters are given greater importance i will not go into that it's, it's my very special subject uh, the, the the ramayanas you know like like if you have read polar rich man or uh, kamal bulkesh ram katha you will find how many ramayanas we have not 300 as ak ramayan said but perhaps 3000 or more uh so but then uh yes that uh, all these were in some sense translations but, but which means our understanding of translation itself traditionally was very different from the western understanding of translation it meant recreation it meant rereading it meant interpretation 
it meant retelling according to one's own imagination it meant narrating the story in an altogether different setting and background so translation for us began to mean translation in the western sense of only after uh, colonization the, the pre colon the pre colonial understanding of translation itself was different and it was it and if we can accept that as a way of defining translation in the literature is founded as i uh, uh, said in the essay uh, on uh, translations and also i should i should just add uh, that uh, we are uh, we have always been a multilingual people and our creativity itself is essentially multilingual uh, no, many of our poets like kabir or meera or uh, uh, you know nanak or vidyapati have been multilingual and even today you will find many poets not only poets novelists also writing in more than one language look at kiran nagarkar look at uh, uh, our madhavi kutti who is uh, who wrote poetry uh, as as kamala das in english and there are many who write in urdu and hindi urdu and gujarati uh, so there is a there is there is a multilingualism and a polyglot fluidity which are in fact a part of indian culture and indian understanding of languages and uh, indian the indian idea of um, uh, language and life the relationship between language and life so translation that's why translation happens to be a very important activity uh, in uh, uh, india uh, in in the literature and that's why we say uh, indian consciousness is in some sense a kind of translating consciousness so very well said sir so very well said which is why i think today we need to talk much beyond just translation to and from english and uh, uh i think translation as a literary form like you said is part of our literary ethos and it's part of our literary uh, dna and uh kannan sir uh i think in recent uh, times you know there's much more being talked about in terms of uh, uh, translation and i think a lot of it is also in the context of translating to and from english uh could you please give us an idea from your perspective on how translation as a form is starting to gain ground in india in india in india so you know um, i don't know if you can say it's gain, uh, beginning to gain ground now because like you said it has always been part of our all our languages and uh, so yesterday i i called uh, permal murugan and asked him what does tolkapiyam our oldest uh, book on grammar say about translations so it says there is a reference to translations as being one form of several types of books and one type is translation that is one reference the second reference is how to write sanskrit words using the sanskrit pronunciation in tamil and how to tamilize sanskrit words so all these three references you know we discuss about yesterday so obviously that means you know tolkapi is roughly dated around 2000 years ago translations have existed before that maybe from sanskrit maybe from bali and um, so i think it's very old and we don't seem to have access to those very early texts the rather text uh, many years old even before kambara madam which are translations but uh, what is what on what basis tolkapi is talking about translation that is even before 2000 years and we don't seem to have those access so i will talk about only about tamil which i know a little bit about that i think you know um, translations even in the modern times of western literature of literature from other parts of india particularly bangla or malayalam has been marathi all have all been very much part of um tamil literary development so one one very interesting thing i have noted you know is that unlike other some of southern languages and many indian languages tamil is a little bit one removed from the national mainstream uh, not so many tamils get into national institutions into national media and uh, they keep a distance from hindi and for all these reasons it's one bit removed in a political modern you know national identity sense but if it comes to literature i would say that we are one of the languages that translates maximum from other languages and um, i think i can i can say with some confidence that we would have translated more literature from malayalam than tamil to malayalam more from kannada than tamil to kannada more from telugu than 
Tamil to Telugu and similarly Bangla and many other languages. And it is now an initiative of Tamil Nadu government that they are promoting Tamil translation first in other Dravidian languages and then also extending that to Indian languages. And they are, interestingly, they are also coming with a proposal now whereby they will also support translations from other languages into Tamil. So I think, you know, so despite the fact that, you know, when it comes to literature itself, we are very open to translations and we've always read a lot of translations, published a lot of translations. And my own publications, we publish about 15 to 20 percent of our annual list of translations from other Indian languages, also from international languages. I'm going to direct my next question to Vasudendra. Uh, I think uh, Vasudendra is uh, not just a publisher in Kannada, but he's also a novelist who has been widely translated into other uh, languages. Uh, the English translation of Mohana Swami, for example, has won so many accolades from uh, all over the world. Uh, what are your opinions on how uh, you know translation as a literary form is doing in the uh, Kannada market? Okay, see, translation of today's time is very different from translation of the folklore. When we say that 300 Ramayanas are there and we need to respect all the 300 Ramayanas, it's because Valmiki is not alive today. If you say that Mira's novel is there and we are going to have 300 uh, Mira's novel separate and she will not have right on that, she is going to fight. She says even she will control syllable, sound, syllable and all. So we are in a different era altogether. Okay. So people of Vedavasa is not alive, Valmiki is not alive. It's very easy to say 300 Ramanas is okay. But how many of us have uh, the liberty to... Uh, uh, allow them to write something different and claim it as their own version. Now we are not in that time. Okay, whether it's a Pampa or Kamba, they are all very different period. So they, that, that openness was there. And also uh, to some things, uh, this thing Ramayana, Mahabharata, though they are a, a boon for us, for the Indians, they are a curse as well. Most of our people didn't think about anything other than that. Till the 1920th century, we were only translating, we were only recreating the Ramayana Bhagavata, nothing else, which I feel sad that the other countries have done much better. They have written common man stories which we didn't write. Okay. So when you come to the present, uh, the same generation, so the, for translation, I have a uh, one uh, metaphor which I'll tell actually what is translation for me. Okay. See, in my, I'm come from Bellari. We have a culture there in Bellari where we take uh, the water of Tungabhadra, we have Hampi there, Hampi Pampapati is there, take the water of Pampapati, that's Tungabhadra water and go to Kashi, Varanasi, okay, and we put that water there in the Kashi and bring the water of Ganga, one tumbler water of Ganga from Kashi and put it back into uh, uh, Tungabhadra in Hampi, Pampapati. So the idea here is Kashi Vishwanatha should taste the river of Tungabhadra, which is so sweet, which he don't get it because he's living in Kashi. And our uh, Pampapati, he he's so uh, unfortunate that he cannot take bath in Ganga. He's staying so well in the south. So that's why he should, we should put some amount of Ganga. So that's what is translation for me, very clearly. So we are bringing some water from Thames and putting it in my Netravati and Kaveri and I am taking some water of Kaveri and putting it in somewhere in Egypt Nile. We cannot take the entire river, so we are doing only little bit. That's what is the translation for me. Okay, so that's being said, translation is a holy act. You have to do, all of us have to do. Many times what happens, I am a creative writer, so because I am a creative writer, I don't get involved in the translation. No, it's not. It's a duty. It's a responsibility that all of us who have got good knowledge in the destination language, we all have to bring various uh, literature from various uh, languages which we feel good and then translate and give it to our readers. It's a way of sharing our joy, joy of our letters with the readers. That's very, very important. In Kannada, it's 
one direction so we keep on getting so many books translated to kannada but what goes from kannada to the other language it's very very remote and what has happened is all these languages indian languages we shall call let us uh, there was a argument you should not call as vernacular language you should not call as regional language so let us call it indian languages so indian languages have become islands and uh, each island cannot go to the another island without a bridge of english so now unless mira's books become uh, famous in english i don't consider it to bringing it to canada all right so that is the curse which we have so though kannan says that they got more kannada books than tamil i think it's other way actually so but we do both of us don't have statistics both are don't have statistics so let us not uh, uh, gossip about that okay but translation has to be done and uh, this english translation the regional uh, to english only it's a recent phenomena all these multinational publishers didn't realize the power of our indian other indian language literature uh, so only now i see a bit because maybe gachar gochar became a hit or uh, one of the meeras novel became hit or their bengali novels became hit now they are opening up and also jcb prize is also one of the reason why so they are also giving importance for the translation of this thing otherwise they weren't keen but frankly the indian the, those who are writing in telugu kannada tamil or malayalam or whatever the indian languages fictions are definitely much richer when compared to what the indian english writers are writing in english the fiction wise non fiction might be might be weak. but the fiction wise this is very big a rich experience a varied experience is there there is a need to take it to the uh, english word or i assume down the line i should be in such a way that i'm i'm from the technological background i'm software engineer so i believe down the line i need this artificial intelligence so intelligent that once someone write vivek writes a novel means you can ask for that novel in french you can ask that novel in telugu you can ask that novel in kannada any language you ask just press a button then you should be able to get that particular novel printed and delivered to your home and i don't think those days are Uh, far very soon we'll have the artificial intelligence to that level and i would like to expect just like ott cinema you change the language i would like to change my language and order it in the uh, amazon so i hope that will make us all equal we're all equal whether you write in tamil whether you write in kannada whether you write in english what's the difference we are all same but unfortunately if you write one book first book in english and it becomes a hit you are international star and here people are writing for 30 years vivek wrote for 30 years in kannada till his book came in gachar gochar came in english nobody even knew what is he writing unfortunate so we all have to be treated equal and translation is the only way to which such equality can be brought it is it's a very important phenomena politically as well as always uh, the expected unexpected answers from vasudendra uh, always been known as a disruptor uh, but i do hope that you know we don't get the ai very soon where you press the button like a noti t because that is leading to my next question which i'm going to ask pratibha right in a sense uh forgetting the ai for now uh does the translator need to almost play as and, and i'm asking you this question as both a writer yourself and a translator uh as a translator do you need to wear the hat of a almost a co-creator when you start your work and is that a hat that you think ai can wear at any point in time i need to give a short uh, intro before coming to that because uh the kannada modern kannada literature is based based on translations because in 1922 when b m shri translated english geetagalu he named it english geetagalu he was not only introducing a new form he was doing away with the adi prasa and antya prasa and with dvitiya prasa and all that you know they were the ones in the beginning of last century who revolutionized not only the language but the form also and why suddenly the sonnet became so popular with kannada poets is and uh, sharas chandra and prem chandra's uh, bankim chandra's novels were translated 
and suddenly they found a new form called novel we didn't have that we didn't have this uh, short uh, sonnet kind of poetry at all even though we had vachanas the vachana format was not popular at all even in the modern uh, kannada so when we talk about kannada literature as such till 19th century we had the old kannada formats that were being uh, even the medieval years uh, shatpadi and other things you know they were still continuing struggling with it at the 18th and 19th century it was only in the 20th century with the language and the form and the content and everything got it was a it was an explosion actually so if i am writing today this way it is only because that explosion happened in 1922 and uh, it was uh, between 20 and 30 the kind of experiments they did in fact the quote that you uh, you read out in the beginning it fits kannada literature verbatim the modern kannada literature modern hosaganada uh, hosaganada sahitya so we call it the hosaganada arunodaya because they didn't know how to write that before that and suddenly they were doing all kinds of experiments and that you know after 10 years it was just one decade and after that in 30 1930 onwards it was the beginning of the navya period and why did navya come because they were influenced by the uh, english writers and suddenly there was uh, this new movement that happened and everybody were going uh, looking at the west you know to to adopt the forms and translate and you know take out the thinking and everything so i think uh, for kannada especially this translation and then the adaptation and even uh, whatever uh, sachidanandan described all that happened in a short period of 20 years in the beginning of last century and then things started happening you know now when we talk about kannada literature modern kannada literature we only start from the last century because so much happened in those 30 years now coming to what uh, uh, to the current times you know see every literature is for that community and that language suddenly if i am write, trying to write if uh, if meera's uh, novels or vivek's novels or even uh, vasudhendra's novels if i start thinking aiming it to be the international celebrity if it to, to get international celebrity status and if you are lamenting that it is it can happen only through english you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of malayalam novels and poetry and short stories are translated to kannada in the, from the original language and the same in tamil also they don't go through kannada we have so many translators who are continuously religiously doing translations of indian languages from the original into kannada and they are also translating from kannada into those languages in the original without going through the english it is only those who don't know or those who are new entrants into this field who want the um, the midway of uh, going through english karunakaran or gangadhar or somebody they never went through english to translate from malayalam to kannada and the same vice versa and uh, what vasudhendra said is only one a small part of the act of translation because everybody doesn't aim for international just because vivek got shortlisted for uh, la award la uh, literary award everybody has started thinking that only if they can do that they can go there and only if they go there they are they have arrived you know Bendre never left his ta- town and he always said that the people I write for my people so how much of translation and transcreating do you want to see for two reasons one is to prove yourself as a writer or to be appreciated by others who may not be your you know like Engli- in the english writers always say authors always say we don't know our readers but we know our readers the regional languages you know we know our readers so suddenly just because my poem is going in english i don't know who is reading it or somebody in the airport may read and he may not even be here the next day my aim is not to reach them i write for my people for my language 
and if in case they want to translate it to other languages and if other language readers appreciate it good i think if i start the second part of it it will be too long so i'll i think we have a limited amount of time and this conversation can go on forever uh which will i'm going to take off from uh, what uh, pratibha just said and again you know i think the aim of this is to talk about translation in its entirety not just translation into english or 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 backwards because uh but i think pratibha did not entirely answer the question of should a translator play the role of a co creator but we will come back to that uh, i am going to ask uh, professor sachidanand the same question the the translator as a co creator and then from that i will ask you the next question yeah b- uh, before i respond to that question i i just wanted to say that i heard at least two people complaining that you know the translation uh, among the south indian languages is unequal maybe but i am not so sure that uh, for example malayalam uh, i counted we have 150 works at least from tamil in malayalam translation right from all the major uh, sangam poets and and of course uh, manimegalai and, and and those ancient classics and then coming down to you know sundar ramaswami and perumal murugan and, and and who not and, and most of the major tamil writers uh, especially fiction writers and quite a few uh, poets including contemporary poets were translated mainly by atur ravi verma who was a, who knew tamil very well uh, so uh, there have been quite a few translations and and the case of kannada is not uh, uh, very different i am just defending my language in that sense because it has been a very receptive language when it comes to translation uh, so uh, anantamurthy uh, is uh, perhaps better known than some of the malayalam novelists in kerala uh, and this is true about quite a few uh, i mean like she is known who is not even even gobal kshadiga lang uh, and many of the later poets even contemporary poets are known in malayalam so uh, so uh, so let us not have an argument over over that uh, because we will have to go into statistics and uh, uh, and all uh, and, and, uh, and, and numbers when you discuss that Uh, but about the translator being a co-creator yes translation you know it has been defined in various ways understood in various ways uh, and there are so many theories of translation including uh, one theory which is called the cannibalistic theory uh, which means uh, the translator is actually swallowing uh, you know the the original uh, the original author it is actually called cannibalistic theory and uh, uh, of course uh, there uh, i one one definition i have many definitions for translation but uh, at least two definitions i have very much like our one is a uh, gayatri chakravarti spivak saying translation is an intimate reading an intimate reading that is you read a work closely it is not like ca- casual reading because in order to translate you have to read carefully read into it read not only the words but also the silences read the culture from which it comes and and and, and read the the uh, i mean the uh, uh, even the punctuation so it, it is is intimate reading in the real sense it is like watching a master painter at work you know a student a, a, an art student watching a master painter you know how the hand moves how the lines are formed how the uh, shades mix so uh, that is one one uh, possible way of approaching translation and the second slightly different is by water benjamin who says uh, it is like an echo you call into a forest that the he says in the forest of language and then you get an echo and translation is that echo you you uh, you call uh, you you shout uh, into uh, the uh, the forest of uh, another language and and uh, what comes back is is translation so there is obviously there is an element of creation creativity in translation without which you cannot do it because i would not trust anybody other than a poet to translate my poems and uh, i have also been you know i've translated more than 2000 pages of poetry from across the world and uh, over the over 50 years and i know that the i i i enjoy translating a poem as much as writing a poem because it is like discovering rediscovering interpreting uh, trying to understand the suggestions and obviously trying to understand also the particular culture from which uh the, the the poem comes and and the perception um, uh, so it is 
and and when you translate an ancient uh, writer an old writer it it's like uh, it's like a double challenge you know dilip chitra speaks about uh, uh, translating tukaram uh, he says tukar uh, yeah, and the reader should not think that tukaram is a contemporary poet at the same time the reader should be able to appreciate tukaram like he or she appreciates uh, a contemporary poet this is the kind of challenge you uh, you have to face when you translate from an uh, from an old text and about contemporary text again there are other kinds of translation depend because there are things that may not really come through uh, really uh, uh, that can fully be translated and, and if you need so many footnotes and all that for translation it is better not to not to translate uh, because this is my own experience of translating my own poetry i i have not translated quite a few of my poems because i find that it, they are so local they will stay in my language and they are only for uh, the people who speak my language so there is an element of creation there is there is, it is you can very well call it uh, co creation uh, because uh, uh, even, even though there is an original you are creating another text uh, from that original and in that sense there is definitely uh, um, uh, creativity in translation it is a creative act uh, um, in, a, in a in a different sense in a, in a different way so very well put and uh, i'm going to direct my next question to you uh, pratibha can i just add a little bit for that last question surely i brought an uh, example of this if you are not a if you are not a creative person this is the kind of translation you do if you call yourself this is kuvempu's poem and this is published uh, not just handwritten this is published one poem of kuvempu doni sagalli munde hogali i'll just read one stanza Uh, on pond border like twinkling drops snow head or twinkling appearing child delicate snow bead air of green jowar land is rubbing coming cool hidden singing intoxicated kokila is bringing sweet speech floating on distant hill sea white cloud resembling that only floating similarly playground of boat we are lives only for play sake to our play of life yesterday for yesterday today for today let be tomorrow for tomorrow <laughs> no, no this this, this sounds like the instructions no, no. to a chinese wardrobe no. kit that you assemble yourself see do you know what this is doni sagali munde hogali dura tirava ser and this is not 100 kuvempu poems are published like this by the same person if you are not that is why i said it is so essential to be a creative person and you know each poem is like this i just brought one and i i have put that in the hall of shame folder and whenever i want to laugh i read that and laugh i think i think mr damodar mauzo said said it very well you can't take a bad piece of writing and do a good translation of it nor can you take a good piece of writing and do a bad translation of it <laughs> this is fully created <laughs> so having said that i'm going to you know yeah, yeah. next question is to vasudhendra we just heard a classical example of a bad translation what in your definition is a good translation <laughs> see uh, um, again i'll go for the metaphor so in my childhood like whenever this instant coffee came into the market we were not familiar to the instant coffee right so they used to put an advertisement saying that Uh, the taste of this coffee is almost same as the filter coffee okay so filter coffee is the original so the translation can go to uh, also almost uh, in, instant to the instant coffee but not the equal but this is the case of prose in case of poetry the coffee becomes tea <laughs> so one of our poet manjunath used to say you should never translate a poem to another language his poem should be written in that original language only so but saying that also my stand up uh, translation is slightly different i don't uh, like to see as a fiction writer i don't like to control my character if we have to give freedom to it so i believe that with the translator as well okay don't control them give them the freedom and give them the trust 
let them come and create on their own so you have to trust first i will never get involved in my translations because that's an extra work i'm not supposed to do why should i have to do it? it's like a um, uh, materialistic mind everything of mine should be great so i am not i don't have such mind at all let them handle it on their own so let them have the freedom but the only thing is i don't expect it to be the replica of my book why i am saying i want to involve in uh, translation bits is my arrogance that i have a english good english right many kannada authors are there who don't have good english so you are doing injustice to them right because i am getting involved so that means say you cannot do that so i am not interested in getting involved in the translation i believe in the translator and i assume that he does the good work suppose he didn't do and my book is still a better work there might be another translation which might be coming down the line like we have so many translation of tall star we have so many translation of this thing so my thing is this the regional i mean vernacular language translation happens only with the neighboring state of course tamil translation we have direct to canada some of them so malayalam we have how many you have from varia how 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 very few just this thing how many we have from uh, uh, spanish directly taken i'm struggling to get one french translator to canada i'm really struggling and not getting so we can't talk only with the small uh, uh, mindset you know so we need to think globally we need to think globally so there is a need see if i am right, i'm sitting here in my village and i have read tolstoy i want someone who is there in russia in a village boy should read my coempo writings okay how it goes is impossible it's nothing to do with uh, like it has to go to the only english but english has become a language like that today it's english tomorrow it could be some other language chinese language you should have a bigger mindset that our uh, writing should go to everywhere i never write for a particular reader i don't know who is my reader see if i am sitting in a village in karnataka i could be a reader for markway so i can't think of a spanish person and start sitting and writing here i'll never write even for canada reader i write for what i want to write okay so that is what we should have if you start writing for a specific audience that's not creativity you should write like it's, i am writing for myself i have something to express i am expressing some people may like it some people may not like it i don't want to have a border of my language right karnataka is not my border i can travel anywhere i can i would like to go across i don't so as a creative person i don't want any borders neither uh, language barrier nor class barrier nor the caste barrier nor the country but i don't want anything i want to travel across smoothly from one place to another place so that's why the translation is important for me for that the easiest way is the english we need to look at it from the positive way not in the negative terms right and it has to happen it's very important so translation i would prefer to give independence to the rest thing i don't want to get involved so much because i have many other things to do not sit and and reading my own book once again in another language is a torture which i just don't like it they ask you to read two times three times second draft third draft i don't want to read my own book so many times it's so boring so why do i get involved let them do i'll trust that's what we had done as a corporate i am a corporate uh, employee software engineer i used to trust my team members and used to believe that they do good work and i do the same thing with the translator as well i don't want to be the hand holding and uh, controlling just i don't like control my characters i don't want to control my translator also really they said uh so just taking off from what uh, one of the points that you made uh, this is a question for you uh, kandan uh, sir uh I think I think you uh, over the past few years have been doing a lot of work uh, taking Indian writing overseas with the stable of uh, Tamil uh, books and writers that you have, and also bringing overseas writing to India. Correct. Uh, give us a sense of uh, how uh, some of what Vasudhendra is talking about. Right, he's read Tolstoy sitting in his village. and there is uh, someone who's sitting in russia who should read kuempu you are actually doing that there is somebody in slovenia or in germany who's reading perumal murugan give us a sense of that how does that work so you know um, i one of my sort of uh, passions as a publisher has always been to sort of try to bring as far as possible 
uh, as a publisher the best of writings in other languages maybe other indian languages other south indian languages also world languages into tamil and also try to take tamil writing to other languages and what can i do as a publisher for this so i you know first time i i participated in the chennai book fair was in 2000 um to january i took a stand in chennai book fair and went to chennai and around a few months before that um one of my friends living in delhi tell me told me that why don't you come to the uh, new delhi world book fair i will support you so i booked a stand in new delhi world book fair so by february the next month i was in the new delhi uh, world book fair and that was you know it was unbelievable world for me i i was so i could see books published in 26 languages and i went to all those stands every hall walking around i also had my stand so it was a huge exposure for me and from that you know i sort of tried to learn about what's happening in other languages actually i i met my first fellow canada publishers in new delhi in you know at the world book fair i i go always go and meet them talk to them what are they doing what kind of publishing they are making so it's a very a uh, natural thing for me to try to understand what is happening compare the quality of production of the books what is the price what kind of book they are publishing what are the topics they are doing so there is a huge exposure for me and through delhi i had opportunity to go to frankfurt where i, I could understand some depth about this right straight till at one level you know out of of out of interest of translate till when that you get from that process will take the work to 10 more languages so that is what i am trying to do as a publisher more than what translators are done traditionally out of their own interest how writers because of their great writing have traveled beyond languages all that is of course there but plus all that somebody taking up professionally helps you in certain ways which you know maybe a translator or writer cannot do you can contribute to the process and that's what i'm trying to do so true because i think everything needs in my mind three things right one is the art then is the science and then is the trade and 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 there needs to be someone who is doing each of these for everything to come together uh, i think we have uh, all but run out of time i've only gone through one third of my questions <laughs> so this could potentially be a two and a half hour session <laughs> next festival you know uh, but uh, uh, you know i just want to summarize this by saying you know what a wonderful opportunity and i don't know just from the trade perspective uh south india reads the vast majority of translated work in india a vast majority of the translated work in india is actually sold in the south as compared to other parts of the country so uh does this i think this just automatically makes you know uh, more sense that in a in a in a in an event which is dedicated to south indian languages we talk about it uh, and uh, you know i'm so sorry that we could only go through almost one third of my questions and we are out of time but uh, thank you all i hope the session was interesting thank you all for being part of it and thanks for the opportunity thank you